How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I just want to start by saying, uh, uh, the, I'm calling it a film, uh, fantastic. And your yeah. performance, uh, fantastic. Um, oh, uh, so, I, listen, I, I'm a big fan of Steve McQueen, but even more so after watching two of the small acts films, um, talk, how, how did he pull this off? Because I know this is supposed to be TV, but the two films, I'm calling it films, and the two that I saw are just fantastic. How, yeah. how did he do this? I don't know. I don't know. He had it all planned out. By the time I met him um, in, in a nice sunny London, on a nice sunny London afternoon and, and, and we went to a, a restaurant to have lunch, he had, he had it all figured out in terms of the way he was going to format this. Um, and I think this is somebody who just operates from real pure passion for the art and for the subject matter. Um, and what we're seeing is that all of that mixed with obviously his natural talent and his professionalism, there's just some dope stuff. So you do still get um, that cinematic experience, you know, with these films. Um, for sure. You have to deliver your, your performance is fantastic in this. And mm -hmm. you have to play someone dealing with, you know, systemic in, um, institutional racism mm -hmm. and someone, you know, dealing with these these problems that you're trying to overcome and, and you're playing someone very angry at times. How is it as an actor playing these scenes and then sort of at the end of the shooting day, are you able to just shut that off or is that sort of carrying with you when you're going home? I think it, I think it depends. I think for scenes like uh, when Leroy discovers that his dad's been assaulted by two police officers and he goes to visit him in hospital, um, that came with a certain deepness and that came with a certain frustration that even follows you into your evening. But, you know, it's part, it is um, a better position than being the person who experiences that firsthand. And that's also something that always stabilizes me and, and, and brings me back because it's just my role to portray a truth. Um, and not all truths I've necessarily walked, you know, I've, I've never faced that myself. But to be in those shoes, to empathize with that, you know, it conveys so much emotions. And then at the same time, you have Steve McQueen, you know, who really, really is passionate about making sure that the truth is captured to the point where, you know, my guy's leaving cameras at the middle of the room and allows you to be free. And that is the, that is the scene, you know, and, and, and for me, it was just a great experience, you know, to collaborate with him in that way. I thought all the performances um, in Red, White and Blue are just so fantastic, especially the stuff with you and your dad. Um, mm -hmm. Did you feel an added pressure because of the subject matter and because it was Steve that you just, you know, more pressure on yourself to deliver something great? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, I, I, I think I think I, I still enjoy my job, which is great. So whenever whenever I do it, the passion to be able to convey truth is is what's on my mind. Like I'm dealing with it much like a student in drama school, you know, given a task. Like that's how I, I, I how it feels. I almost forget about the audience, um, and I'm reminded when I see, oh, this is a campaign date, you know, for a year's time or whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, people have to watch it. I'm like I forgot. You know, so I, I I just get to delve into just the artistry of it and collaborating and having Steve as well. I was just watching him, you know, just watching him work because I had, you know, obviously we all heard rumors. I want to know how this how this ish goes down. So to get a front seat to that was was dope. No, completely. The thing that I really uh, uh, one of the things that Steve does so well is that he is able to transport you to another time and place, and it just feels like you're there, and it's you're not. There. And it's not easy to do because if it was easy, everyone could do it. Um, what what did you see firsthand that maybe that taught you a little bit about the way Steve puts magic on the screen? Well, it's he he keeps he has kept an energy that even when you go through drama school, some people lose it. And this is the 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 creative kid, you know, the kid that just it, it imagines things out of their head and tries to see it portrayed in in, in scenes. He's much like, very much like that. When something excites him, he, he's emotional, he's off, he's laughing, he's, he's like, oh, like he's reacting like the audience while we're, while we're shooting. Um, and I just think he's just very engaging. It's because he just has this natural interest for what he does. You know, it's hard not to be that way too when you're on set. And I think that's a lot of what you're, of what you're seeing. And also is it's his, he likes intricate detail, you know. He'll tell the cameras to pause before we go for a shot just to move a painting. In, in, in one direction, just because there's, a, there's something that every single thing in the shot represents. Um, and to watch that and to see that is, is, is really cool. Um, how much as an actor are you looking at the, the camera and the lenses that are being used 
um, and s- sort of seeing that and, and you know, and, and, or how much are you sort of ignoring that and just focusing on what your the performance? I've de- definitely, I, I, as an actor, no, but now I produce, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at everything. Um, and it, and it's great to, it's great to see. And there's a, there's a balance that comes with it. Obviously I have to get to work and get cracking and make sure I portray a good performance, you know, and don't have you guys writing reviews that go, Ugh. so um, I have to fixate on the job, but it, I, I do, I, I look at everything and, and on this specifically, we had so many um, members of the, of the crew that I had never met before. Um, and, and so I, I was just very curious to know who everybody was. Very diverse crew too. Uh, you mentioned producing, um, and I spoke to you last time, I, I think I spoke to you, you talked about producing. Um, I have to ask, is, is directing something that you're looking at for down the road or is that something, or is it more producing? Um, for, for now it's, for now it's producing, um, you know, we're currently working with Netflix on our, on our deal for our African slate. And, and, and I really enjoy being a part of, um, the creative process. I think I would like to be established as a producer first, because I, I guess sometimes you fear as an actor transitioning into producing, especially an actor with prominence, it can sometimes just be a, a, a title job, you know, and you're not necessarily raising funds, you know, you're not necessarily getting, you know, sample treatments every day and, and trying to figure out what story to put out. But since I really, really want to do this, you know, I think I'll establish myself in producing. And if I do want to direct, I'm going to have to show respect to those that know how to do it and go through some training process. Cause I don't know shit. <laughs> um, but as I am curious though, for producing, um, what, do you think it's going to be coming up for you? What can you talk about that's getting close to being made, if anything? Yeah, our, net, our, net, our Netflix uh, slate, um, we have one project that we signed on that we're, we're, we're continuously um, um, working on um, and other stuff. We've got, I've got some big, solid producing news coming, but I can't, I can't say nothing about it for now. But it's, uh, it's, it's dope. <laughs> it's dope. That is dope. Proper dope. I think right. everyone, yeah. Uh, I got to stop there. And I mean it seriously, though. I, I, uh, you're fantastic in this. And the, and the film is just so well done. Um, thank you for your time. Always a pleasure. Pleasure.